Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Anna. I'm a little bit spooky and today we are reviewing the Super Dewy Skin Tint from Revolution, or Makeup Revolution, as well as the Bright Eyes Illuminating Eye Concealer. So we're going to talk about both these products and boy have I got some things to say. So yeah, let's get into it. Now, before I jump into the full demo, everything about this tinted moisturizer, I am going to run through the claims with you really quickly because I forgot to do that. <laughs> when I was applying it. This is the Super Dewy Tinted Moisturizer from Makeup Revolution. This retails for $5.99. It's a blend of skincare and makeup, but I really didn't see what actual skincare is in it other than some wild berry extract. Uh, it says it blurs imperfections, even skin tone, sheer hint of coverage, dewy finish, wild berry extract. Okay, so... <laughs> We're going to go ahead and roll the demo while I talk about this. I am going to show you just my normal skincare that I do every single day. That's all I'm doing today. No primers, nothing like that. And I'm going to I'm going to argue every one of these claims really quickly <laughs> with you guys. So the blend of, blend of skincare and makeup. It's the only skincare I think I saw in there was like wild berry extract. I don't even know what that does for the skin. So there's that. I don't think that is <laughs> A selling point or anything necessarily. Blurs imperfections. It literally does the opposite of blur imperfections. It emphasizes your imperfections. It will sink into every pore you have on your face and gather in it. Every little crevice, every little crack, every little fine line will be just cakey and not good. It looks very patchy on the skin. It doesn't do well with a beauty blender. It doesn't do great with a makeup brush. Fingers is the only way I've gotten it to work and to like really, really baby it. And even then it just balls up no matter what I've used underneath it. <laughs> and it doesn't play well with any primers at all. It just, nope. It will cling to every dry patch you have on your face, every flake, every bit of texture. It will just cling to it and gather around it and just look awful and patchy. It will even your skin tone with the hint of coverage. Very, very much a hint of coverage, which is the only thing I'm not mad about with the product. I actually like the coverage level. I think the little bit of coverage and evening out it does is it looks really nice. The shade match is perfect for me, but the fact that it looks so uneven in application and patchy, what's the point? And the dewy finish, no. Nah. It basically looks, it looks more, my skin looks more matte after applying this than it did before. And I have combo skin. It can be a little bit dry, it can be a little bit oily. It's kind of in between, fairly balanced these days. And this just somehow makes my skin look dry and greasy at the same time. I know it looks okay at the beginning of this video because I literally just applied it. But up close, it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. <laughs> and yeah, I'm... Hopefully you can see the details of this. I'm gonna to try to zoom in on my skin so you can really see how it's sitting on the face. Um, yeah, so the dewy finish I think is not, no, <laughs> it's, it's a satin finish. And in a few hours you don't look dewy, you look like you dunked your head in some chicken grease. It's it's not great. The, the wear time on here is, mm -mm, no, not good. Uh, just the claim that it blurs imperfections is just the worst. <laughs> like, it does literally nothing but emphasize every imperfection in your skin. I don't have a whole lot of deep wrinkles. I have a few fine lines. And most of my trouble area is my smile lines, crease in my chin, and I have a little bit around, like, fine lines on the forehead. And the way this sits around the nostril... In nose area is so bad you can see it just sitting on the skin and it just looks very cakey and patchy so yeah that that is my my dispute with the claims <laughs> and uh, yeah we'll move on to talking about that concealer in a moment so let's move on to the bright eye concealer which retails for ten dollars it comes in eight shades and this is meant to target under eye circles instantly brighten, conceal redness and blemishes, 
smooth cream formula with vitamin C. Now this I've actually had a lot better luck with. I think this is actually a pretty product. Um, let me just go ahead and apply it so you can see what I mean. It has a little sponge tip applicator. I twist a little bit up here. And because I have that tinted moisturizer underneath, going in with a brush or something just doesn't want to agree very well. So what I'm going to do is first is just tap this out my fingers so you can see how that looks. Personal preference, I don't like using my fingers to apply makeup. But this blends up really nicely. It does brighten. Very light coverage here as well. But I do have a brightening effect. And I feel like this is one that you could probably use with other products. Like if you want a little more coverage, you could probably take something with a tad more coverage mixed in. But this does give a really nice brightened effect. And it does a little bit of something. I think it's a nicer in the sense of a highlighting product. Like to, to um, bring forward like high points on the face because it is very illuminating. I think it works better for that than necessarily under the eyes. Now let me show you using a brush to kind of pat it in. And it does nicely with a brush to uh, blend out. This one I think does fine with a beauty blender as well. If anything, I think uh, taking a beauty sponge just to kind of press it out does a great job with this one. It doesn't lift too terribly much of the coverage. But as you see, very light coverage. You can still see a little bit of darkness under my eyes. And I don't have dark circles. That's really not a big problem for me. So if you have dark circles, you're definitely not going to like this concealer. If you don't like a glowy, illuminating, basically almost shimmery looking concealer, you're really going to hate this. Um, I would not put this over blemishes because you're basically going to highlight them because this is a gl very glowy product. This has more glow to it than the Super Dewy does by far. Like you can see this looking almost, it's like almost a more pigmented, little less glowy version of like a flawless filter type product from Charlotte Tilbury. Like it's, it's an odd product, but that being said, it doesn't look bad on my personal, on my skin. If you have a lot of texture under your eyes, you're not going to like this. Uh, I think this is not something that's going to work for a ton of people. Just because it doesn't, it, it's going to highlight if you have texture or some fine lines, I feel like. That being said, it doesn't look bad on me, but these are issues that I don't have. But I can definitely speculate that it's not going to go well for a lot of people. Uh, the pigmentation is very light on this. You're not going to get a whole lot of coverage or anything. What I do like it for is kind of more of a highlighting situation like you would with any other concealer, but just using it around to uh, bring a little light to other portions of the face that you don't mind them being a little more glowy. And you can build it up a little bit, but my qualm with it is that the more you build it, the glowier it's going to look. It's just a little too glowy for a concealer. It is looking a little patchy on the forehead there, but that is probably the tinted moisturizer underneath. I've used this with other foundations and I think it looks fine. It definitely brightens and I think it's a nice companion product that if you wanted to go in with a little bit something with a little more coverage over top like a like something like an elf camo concealer to really do the the lifting the heavy duty lifting for the coverage portion of things I think that would be fine and this could just be used as a brightening almost corrector type product and to bring a little light around the eyes but honestly, I would say just go with the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind in the brightening shade if that was something you're going for. To me, this just doesn't, this is not a very refined product. It's not bad, but it's not good. Uh, it's just a little, and I'm going to put a little bit here where I do need to build up some coverage 
because the, the tin moisturizer just was not going to build on my chin and it just did not look good trying to build it on my chin. But what I think about this one is that the places that you're putting your concealer aren't places that you want to be highlighted, like as in shimmery. I don't want shimmery under eyes. I don't mind a little glow, but this is this is getting almost into like flawless filter territory. I wouldn't get this expecting coverage and to perform like a normal concealer. I don't know where they get the claims of saying it's targeting dark circles too much other than the brightening effect and definitely would not recommend putting this on any blemishes or pimples or anything that's like raised on the skin because girl it's just gonna catch a light and it's gonna be like look here look pimple look it's not gonna be good and this one also will cling to any dryness that you do have like I can see these products like sitting right in here between my eyebrows I can see them visibly sitting on the skin and it's I think it's more of this than this but I can definitely see things I can see that see the tinted moisturizer like settling into pores and not just looking smooth over the skin like I can see it like gathering in like little creases and stuff and you can just it's just not a pretty product at all it really isn't it's just it's a dud but let me try to finish up my face and look a little more put together here and see where we can get a little more coverage I think it's the more I mess with my skin the worse this starts looking it starts lifting off and making patches it's very patchy that's the best way to describe it yeah let me try to improve this and see where we get um, like at the moment not bad most of the glow that you're seeing on my face though or all the glow honestly on my face is coming from the, the concealer it's like a skin enhancer with a little bit of coverage more than it is a concealer like yeah yeah my under eyes look bright but can you still see pigmentation shadowiness yeah it just made them look a little brighter <laughs> like some face powder just to try to set my under eyes a touch so I'm just gonna take this on a little setting brush I'm gonna use my lift and illuminate just to set around the eye area and here's the thing when you go to set your face the product just lifts off too it just won't it does not want to stay on your skin it's almost like your skin repels it it just lifts up and gets really really patchy but I wanted to show you actually kind of trying with the product and trying to make it work and just how not great it is and this is a very flattering powder that does kind of help with pores and textures and I can still still see it I could just see the pigmentation like gathering in areas of my face really not an ideal product at all it looks very streaky and just kind of awful on my nose <laughs> as well there's really not much doesn't have much going for it like I, I can't it's not that it's like oh you know there's this about it but it has redeeming qualities I don't feel like there's any redeeming qualities on this it just is not good whereas the concealer I can kind of find ways to incorporate it just for like highlighting purposes as in in more of the highlighting contouring way not Try to make it work enough to get through the rest of the day. I'm not even going to bother doing a wear test because I'm going to insert a clip here showing you what it looked like at the end of the day the first day I tested it. And the first day was probably really the best results I got with it. That's how it looked after, I believe it was only like six hours. It does not wear well. It completely will just disappear from your face. And feels really tacky and it's not a product you can set down either but it has a stickiness to it that's just unpleasant it's it's unpleasant feeling on the skin I don't think it's particularly lightweight feeling I'm just taking a little bit of elf putty primer and uh, not putty primer elf putty bronzer to add a little shape to the face since our coverage is so light I'm just gonna keep the rest of the face pretty pretty light and I do want to recommend some tinted moisturizer 
tinted serum type products that I think are way better than this that you can get at the drugstore that will blow this out of the water. First would be the, oh shoot, what's it called? I used it up, I don't have it on hand. But it's the number seven Protect and Perfect. That one is a great one. If you're looking for something with a little more coverage to it, this is kind of mixing a little bit more into the It Cosmetics CC Cream territory. If you're looking for just a really solid tinted moisturizer from the drugstore, the Tinted Hydrator from Wet n Wild leaps and bounds better than this. This looks magical on the skin. No texture, it really just floats and creates this beautiful, smooth canvas on the skin and it's beautiful. It doesn't settle, it doesn't emphasize texture. It truly is a beautiful product on the skin and I think it works great even on my oilier skin type that has some surface dryness. This looks beautiful, beautiful product. Like every time I wear it, I'm just, wow, like amazed buy it and it is so affordable. I think it is cheaper than this. You do get a little less product, but it's a better product and I think a little more accessible than the Revolution products. And yeah, this this leaps and bounds better. Has a little more coverage to it. It just makes your skin look beautiful. I do have a full wear test and video on this and review. I'll link in the eye. And if you're looking for a little more coverage, the H Perfect Serum Foundation is a beautiful option. The number seven, Protect and Perfect, is a beautiful option. There's so many better products. And if you're like me, you got suckered by that revolution display at your local Walgreens or Target or anywhere and saw this and thought, that looks so nice. Resist the temptation and just say no. Just say no, because it is not nice. Taking a little bit of Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin in Sunset, or in Golden Hour. But yeah, I'm just going to slap a little mascara on and I think that's going to be it for today. Because... E. And this is the Well People Exhibitionist Mascara. Oh, have you guys seen, uh, is my French's new lipstick? <laughs> the 12 year old boy that lives in my brain is cracking up right now. I mean, I'm dying laughing in my head because I'm immature I really am and I wonder how many people will get demonetized whipping that out in a video to put on I love the well people mascara for like just every day the exhibitionist mascara like it's like it's not just look nice it's just it's a nice mascara that's just not too much sometimes without a full beat on Something like the telescopic lift can almost look like too much on the eyes and look a little heavy in comparison. And that's as good as it's getting today. As far as the makeup goes, <laughs> See, my final thoughts with the super dewy is just don't bother with it. If you have dry skin, it's not gonna look good. It's gonna sink into every little dehydrated area you have on your face. It's gonna cling to any dry patches. It's gonna emphasize any sort of flake you have on your skin. If you have oily skin, it's basically just gonna melt off of you in no time. And it doesn't like to play well with other product. It just is patchy. It it's balls up. It has a really not great texture on the face it emphasizes everything you don't want a tinted moisturizer to emphasize there are better options and it does not look um, glowy on the skin really <laughs> it does not look dewy it is a very bizarre just not good product uh, as far as the concealer goes i feel like it's uh, kind of useless in a way like yeah it brightens but I feel like you're gonna have to use it with a more full coverage concealer if you want actual coverage going on. If you had dark circles, I don't think it is great to use for covering blemishes. It's just gonna emphasize them because it is very highlighty, pearly, glowy in the way like a flawless filter type product is, <laughs> which. It's not what you want on a blemish, you know? You kind of don't want to emphasize that. It 
it sits fine under the eyes like it doesn't look bad but I think if you had under eye texture you're really not gonna like it but it's something that I can find a use for whereas this I cannot find any use for in my in my makeup uh, routine and collection it's just it's gonna get decluttered and neither product really has great wear time it's pretty much gone in a couple hours so they're just this is really just not worth it so save your uh, $5.99 and get the wet and wild tinted hydrator instead you'll be much happier with that okay so that is all for today thank you for hanging out with me let me know your thoughts down below on these products and I will see you guys in the next one stay safe and stay spooky bye now